Hey everybody, how are you doing? Thank you for joining me tonight. So I haven't had time to plan. I know what the angels are wanting me to come on and talk about. I haven't planned at all what I'm going to be talking about, but um, we'll go with the flow. I fully trust them. So I hope this helps some of you. Um, and if you think it will help somebody else, please do share it. Um, I got a sign this morning that I'm definitely doing the right thing because a part of my story is um, domestic abuse and losing somebody and um, well, quite a bit of loss really. And the person I was doing reading for this morning was exactly the same. I find now a lot of people with the similar stories cross my path. Um, and I do believe that I went through what I did so I can help these people. Because there is a feeling when you've lost somebody you love or you've been through massive trauma and hurt in your life that nobody really understands. You think you could tell your friend but they don't really understand because they haven't. Ha it hasn't happened to them. So here's me telling you my story. I'm also going to tell you how I found the angels and how they've helped me through um, some pretty shitty times. So although one thing what people do say to me is that um, why I'm good thank you Faye um, why does crappy things happen to people um, why do the angels why do God why does the universe let that happen well everybody has um, a journey and everything happens for a reason You've got to go through these shit times to grow stronger, to learn, to be able to um, make different decisions in your future, be stronger. So, okay. So I've always, there's always been an interest in angels. Um, I've always known that the spirit and angels were there. I've seen them a lot since I was a young girl. And um, I suppose at different times in life they've come and gone and um, yeah, maybe at specific times you sort of forget them because life takes over but you all always know they're there. And then I think it was my 11th or 12th birthday, I got my first pack of tarot cards bought for me and then I think I was 16, 17 maybe, I maybe just started driving and I went for a reading and the lady said to me, why, why are you sat here and I'm reading for you, it should be you reading for me, you really need to concentrate on the gift you've got and um, help other people. Well. You sit there and th when somebody tells you that, don't you? And you think, hmm, I can't do that. I can't help people. Well, look where I am now. It wasn't meant to be then, but it is now. So then um, I did all the office jobs and everything and worked for the family firm. And 11, 12 years ago, we'll start with the... I'll give you some specifics how I know the angels are there, okay? So, um, 11, 12 years ago, I met this man who was really charming. Um, really made me believe he was a nice guy. So, things happened and he turned to be not so nice. Actually, probably, if I was totally honest, he was evil. So... It was early in 2007. He would, he'd sort of 
isolated me from my friends and family. I still seen them, but um, it was harder. He sort of wanted all my energy. So that was happening. And then on the 29th of August, 2007, Um, I found out I was pregnant and got a phone, phone call from the police to tell me my dad had died. He'd gone away on business that day. I thought everything was fine. He was staying over and then the police phone to say he's passed away. So, um, big shock. We didn't know he got a heart problem. He just had an instant heart attack and passed away. That was a major trauma. Um, I worked with my dad 12 hours a day, did the family business. I was dealing with idiot head, who I like to call idiot head. I've got a lot stronger words I could call him. But um, he was so, he was all very nice 24 hours. And then the day of the funeral came and he wouldn't come to the funeral with me. He was convinced I was having an affairs with anybody, anybody male really. That was how he ruled at that time. So I spent my whole time convincing him I wasn't. And then I was pretty ill, upset. Um, on the day of my dad's funeral, as everybody would. I didn't um, drive home from the funeral. I got a taxi and he wasn't at home when I got there. He wouldn't answer the phone. So then the following morning he arrived home and he'd been in a lap dancing club all night. So um, that was pretty shitty. And then I ended up in hospital and I miscarried my baby. So that was a double whammy of loss and dealing with daily beatings and mental abuse, emotional abuse from this idiot. So things went pretty downhill from there. Um, you may say, why were you pregnant? Well, he'd convinced me that, um, I mean, you do a lot of things when you're scared that you probably um, wouldn't do in normal circumstances. So he'd convinced me that if I had a baby, I was proven I loved him. So nine months later, 10 months later, um, I was still not really coping well with dad's passing and or losing a baby, still dealing with him. I found out I was pregnant again and the same situation happened. He wasn't there was no proof that I lost the babies because he was beating me, but that is what I believe. Um, so that was three. I'd had quite enough by now. And um, he was still convinced I was cheating. So we booked a lie detector. And yeah, I didn't even know you could do lie detectors outside Jeremy Kyle. Who would? Hey. <laughs> But there you go. Um, so we went off to this lady's house that did. I can't even remember the official name for a lie detector test now. Um, thank you, Linda. So, yeah, I went and we did this test and he thought um, that he could catch the polygraph or something, whatever it's called. Um out and um, I passed the test but he was convinced because it was a lady doing the test that um, I'd paid her to pass me so he told me we had to go in separate cars here because he was convinced it was going to fail so we came out and he got in my car with me and he'd obviously weighed up the area we were in at the time and I have got a reason for telling you this bit of the story, I promise. Um, so we um, went to this rough bit of ground. I hadn't got a clue where I was in Fife. So um, 
he was busy screaming at me, telling me I'd, fa I'd failed and paid her to pass. And the next thing I knew, I was lay on the floor outside of the car and there was... Um, he'd stamped on my hands so I couldn't move my hands and there was a boot coming to my head. So I really thought I was going to die. I think he probably would have killed me but all of a sudden there was lights come on in the it was quite late at night there was lights come on in the houses that were overlooking where we were and I honest to God believe that the angels were there and saved my life that night there was um, I think I'd probably lost my way with the angels a bit I knew my dad's spirit was there and I was always talking to him and writing to him but life was pretty shit so that was one thing I absolutely knew in my heart. He stopped and they saved my life. And then a year to the day after dad passed away, I was told I wasn't allowed to go to my dad's grave. So that was it really. Something, dad gave me strength, angels gave me strength. Something gave me the strength to get out of there. Now he always told me he'd kill me if I ever left him and he was pretty psycho. There was something well amiss, probably still is amiss in his brain. And I have wrote all details down in a book that my book may get published at some point, but um, not yet. I don't think the time's right yet. So that's how I knew the angels were there. And that day, I got the strength and I left him. Don't know where it came from, or it was such a meticulous plan to get out of there because he timed me how long it took me to take his kids to school that were living with us at the time and phoned me from his work. So that's a pretty overview. And that nightmare continued. I ended up having to move from the area because he just... Although I went to the police, he terrorised me and the police didn't do anything. I wouldn't trust the police, so anything, I, they made the whole situation worse. So he convinced the police I was mentally deranged and that continued and then I moved away and start re started rebuilding my life. Um, so that's how I know the angels and spirit are there because they saved me really they give me the strength to get out of there and yes life has been pretty shitty since um, it's not I've gone through dark holes I've gone through depression anxiety having panic attacks not wanting to see anybody it's been pretty tough but I am I'm out of it I'm at peace totally with the situation Look, I can tell you all about it without crying. So, and I know there are so many people going through the same thing. There's, um, people experience loss every day. There's more people than I would like to even realize that go through domestic abuse. And it's not just the physical. It's the emotional and the mental that stays with you for years and years. I mean, nine years since the day I left him, I'm still going through it. But um, there's still always that underlying thing. But um, yes, so the angels and spirit have helped me through depression, anxiety, they've saved me and it's really important to know that um, you're never alone they are always with you and you can talk to them at any time you want and I do believe it is my belief which helps me that I went through all that crap and shit and heartbreak to help others it's um, 
it's an un it's just having somebody there to understand knowing somebody else has been through it that is not only happening to you if it is happening to you right now if you are experienced the mental emotional physical abuse any of them you just one of them is bad enough then please do speak up tell somebody anybody whether it's a friend or a refuge just tell somebody there is forums out there where you can talk to people find strength from other people and know that the angels and the spirit will help you ask for the help you need you don't always get the help you need where you think there's an urgency and you need help tomorrow the angels and spirit won't always put that um they have no concept of time so the help you think you need now might not come straight away so be patient it doesn't mean they're not listening okay and anybody who you've loved and lost your friends your family your loved ones they are right beside you every single day and they are listening to you they are supporting you um feel it in your heart trust your heart they are there and not not any day ever do you have to do anything on your own okay there's um i i've been in the place where um you don't think you can even but get up tomorrow morning you don't want to didn't even want to be here at times so I know how you feel and you can you can overcome it you can get the help you need there is help there from the angel spirit, spirit friends it's um it's there now I hope that has helped somebody out there um the angels have been bugging me saying you need to tell your story so and I didn't really know where to start or how to do it so thank you so much for listening um yeah let me know if I've helped you or anybody else and please do share if you think it'll help somebody else and just be aware of the people around you if they're, you know they're not okay, there's something going on, they've lost somebody, they're going through a shit time, just let them know you're there. Because it really does help. And I definitely couldn't have got through this without um, my friends and family. Um, a big shout out to Sam, my very dear friend, who was the first person that I told that it had all been happening because I tried to hide it for a very long time. And I didn't tell her for a very long time. So thank you for listening. Um, have a great evening. And I will be... I will do live readings. Maybe tomorrow night, if not Friday. But I will post and let you know. Okay? Love you all lots. And send an angel blessings and healing to you all. Take care.